Stella, a 17-year-old battling cystic fibrosis, resides in a hospital. She spends time in her hospital room with two friends who chat about an upcoming excursion. Regrettably, Stella can't join them despite being the one who planned the trip. Stella reassures her friends, bids them farewell, and closes her hospital room door. A fleeting moment of sadness crosses her face before she resumes her day. Every aspect of Stella's day is meticulously scheduled due to her illness. Her medications are organized with precision, and she keeps a comprehensive to-do list for her treatments. She also records video blogs discussing her treatments and the life of a cystic fibrosis patient. She humorously mentions her near obsession with her treatments. At one point, Stella is seen reading a book on the subject of life after death, revealing her contemplation of her own mortality. Poe, another cystic fibrosis patient, and Stella's closest friend, adheres to strict regulations that require CF patients to maintain a six-foot distance to prevent cross-infections. Poe and Stella communicate mainly through text and FaceTime. They discuss Poe's recent breakup with his boyfriend, Michael. During a light-hearted exchange, Poe suddenly starts choking, prompting Stella to rush down the corridor to check on him. A nurse notices that Poe has activated his call button as well. Both Stella and the nurse arrive at Poe's room to find him unharmed, as he admits that he mistakenly pressed the button. It becomes evident that Poe tends to have such mishaps frequently. Will Newman arrives at the hospital to participate in a drug trial for CF. His affluent mother holds hope for his recovery, but Will's enthusiasm is notably lacking. Will had previously contracted B. cepatia, a severe bacterium that removed him from the transplant list. Stella catches sight of Will's room, where he allows two friends to engage in intimate activities. She is unimpressed by his lack of consideration. Stella proceeds to the neonatal intensive care unit Wanik to watch over the babies. Will follows her there and attempts to strike up a conversation, but Stella is irked by his apparent disregard for his own health. Will nonchalantly remarks that they are both facing a dire future and that he wants to savor the time he has left. Barbara, a nurse, walks in and expresses her disapproval of their proximity. Will departs and Barbara reminds Stella of the risk posed by Will's infection, jeopardizing her chance at a lung transplant. Later, Stella gazes out of her hospital room window and spots Will perched on a building ledge. She embarks on a challenging journey up the stairwell. Discovering a $20 bill placed in the door jam to keep it ajar and confronts Will about his reckless actions. Frustrated and concerned, Stella returns to her room but remains preoccupied with Will's well being. She goes back to his room and demands to see his treatment regimen. Will presents a crumpled and doodled upon paper, and Stella notices that his breathing vest is carelessly strewn on the floor with no medication cart in sight. Will and Stella embark on a journey of shared treatments via FaceTime and gradually form a deep bond. Will begins watching several of Stella's blog videos, learning more about her life. The pair exercises in the gym, maintaining a strict six-foot distance, and Stella finally consents to let Will draw her while she sits by the window. However, he keeps the drawing to himself. Curious, Will delves into Stella's older video content and uncovers that Abby stopped appearing in them about a year ago. He deduces that Abby has passed away and confronts Stella, inquiring if Abby's memory is what drives her meticulous approach to her treatments. Stella confirms Abby's death and discloses that it also shattered her parents' marriage. She confides that she feels compelled to fight for her life because Abby wasn't the one destined to die. Will attempts to apologize, but Stella angrily leaves the room. Stella's feeding tube becomes infected, and her doctor recommends surgery to replace it. Will learns from Stella's blog videos that Abby used to sing a special song to calm Stella before surgeries. He sneaks into her room disguised in surgical attire to prevent infection and sings the soothing song to her. Stella is deeply touched by his gesture. Nurse Barb catches Will leaving Stella's room and chastises him. Will explains that he wanted to alleviate Stella's fears. Nurse Barb, recalling a past relationship between patients that ended in tragedy, is determined not to let it happen again. Will researches his bacterial infection and concludes that it's unsafe for him and Stella to continue interacting. Stella emerges from her surgery. With newfound hope for a potential relationship with Will, she discovers a box by her bedside containing paper flowers left by Will. 
she leaves a somewhat tipsy voicemail for Will, complimenting his fluffy hair and sexy skinny legs, and eagerly awaits his call. However, Will ignores her. Stella eventually texts Will, arranging a meeting in the atrium and dressing up for the occasion. Poe informs her that Will won't be coming. Stella pleads with Will in his room, but he insists that she leave. Poe offers his apologies to Stella and the two spend time together in a playroom. Stella is clearly upset about Will. Poe expresses his frustration at his inability to engage in relationships, fearing that he might burden someone with his illness. Stella arrives at Will's door with a pool cue and asks if he's in. He agrees, and they set a date for later. Stella and Will meet up for their date, using the pool cue for social distancing. Will mentions his upcoming 18th birthday and his desire to have more control over his health decisions. They end up at the hospital pool, engaging in a deep conversation about their beliefs regarding life after death. Will expresses his view of it as lights out, while Stella refuses to believe that her sister Abby simply vanished. She shares how Abby tragically passed away after a cliff-jumping accident, and Stella regrets not being there for her. In a moment of vulnerability, Stella reveals her embarrassment about her scars, confessing that she's never had sexual intimacy. Will reassures her, complimenting her beauty and revealing his desire to touch her. Stella courageously removes her dress, exposing her scars, and Will reciprocates by revealing his own scars. They both jump into the pool together. Nurse Barb arrives for her morning shift and quickly realizes that Stella and Will are absent from their beds. Poe alerts them, and they return without getting caught. The following day, Stella concocts a balloon-adorned scavenger hunt to lead Will on an enchanting birthday quest. She astonishes Will by organizing a clandestine birthday celebration within the hospital, with Poe and all their friends in attendance. Poe, preparing the meal, engages in a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Stella about reconciling with Michael and the necessity of embracing love, considering how fleeting life can be. The group relishes a delightful dinner and captures the moment with a group photo, only to have Nurse Barb discover their revelry. She sternly instructs everyone to return to their rooms, warning that she will initiate Will's transfer to a different hospital in the morning. Poe rebukes her indignantly, exclaiming, but it was fun. The call button in Poe's room is activated, and, assuming it's a prank, the nurse leisurely proceeds to investigate. Upon opening the door, she discovers Poe unconscious on the floor. Numerous nurses and doctors rush into the room, alerting Stella and Will, who anxiously wait outside. Despite their resuscitation efforts, Poe tragically passes away. As stated by the loss, Stella returns to her room and begins tossing her medication and dismantling her artwork. Will lingers in the doorway, unsure of how to console her. Stella screams that Poe was her closest friend, and she never got to hug him. When Will attempts to place his hand on Stella's shoulder, she angrily pushes him away and instructs him to leave. Will retreats to his room, commencing the process of packing his belongings. Stella wraps herself up warmly and ventures outside the hospital to gaze at the falling snow. She spots Will sitting in a waiting area with his bag and approaches the glass window. They touch hands through the glass, symbolizing their mutual forgiveness. Stella mentions her desire to see the lights, though it's a two-mile walk. Will understands her grief over Poe, but insists she must return inside. Stella echoes Will's earlier advice about living life to the fullest and continues her journey. The two scale a snowy hill, where Stella creates a snow angel, Will suggests they keep moving, mindful of the cold. Meanwhile, back at the hospital, the nurses are still reeling from Poe's tragic passing. Stella and Will's doctor rushes in to announce that a pair of lungs is en route and that Stella needs to be prepared for surgery. Nurse Barb hurries to Stella's room but finds her absent. She texts Stella and contacts her parents, expressing her concerns. Stella receives the messages about the potential transplant, but now committed to being with Will, chooses to ignore them and continues their impromptu adventure. She and Will stumble upon a frozen pond and Stella confidently asserts that the ice is thick enough. Will hesitates but eventually joins her. They revel in laughter and slide around on the ice, sharing their feelings and declaring their love for one another. They both tumble down, coming perilously close to kissing, but Will maintains that they can't. Stella's parents have arrived, bewildered by their daughter's impromptu escape from the hospital. Will's mother also appears, and Stella's parents direct their anger toward Will for their daughter's actions.
Will's mother defends her son, while Nurse Barb steps in to assert that Stella's actions are her own, urging everyone to focus on finding her. Will's mother alerts him about the lungs, and he implores Stella to return to the hospital. Stella admits that she was already aware of the transplant but insists on seeing the lights, much to Will's disbelief, amidst their back-and-forth argument. Stella stumbles and falls onto the ice. Terrified, Will rushes to the bridge's edge, only to realize that she has fallen through. Panic sets in as Will steps onto the ice, quickly texting for help and attempts to pull Stella from the frigid water. Struggling with their breathing equipment, he resorts to using the oxygen tube and his scarf to rescue Stella. She remains unresponsive, and after some hesitation, Will begins mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. He collapses beside her on the ice. Moments of silence pass before Stella finally coughs up water and resumes breathing. Stella and Will are rushed to the hospital, with the doctor discussing the urgency of preparing Stella for surgery. Stella vehemently expresses her refusal to undergo the transplant, declaring her desire to be with Will. Will, in the bed next to her, implores Stella to get the transplant for him, and she ultimately consents. As Stella undergoes surgery, Will waits in his hospital room with his mother. Nurse Barb enters to inform him that Stella's test results have miraculously come back negative for the bacteria. Will's mother inquires about her son's condition, prompting Nurse Barb to sadly reveal that the drug trial has failed. Will expresses his remorse, but Nurse Barbara offers words of solace. Stella awakens from surgery, intubated and unable to speak. Her parents play a video message from Will, in which he conveys his regrets about the failed drug trial and laments his inability to show her the lights. Outside her hospital room window, a magnificent display of sparkling lights is unveiled and Will approaches the glass. He calls Stella's phone and shares a heartfelt conversation about understanding the adage that if you love something, you should let it go. He admits his love for her but insists that he cannot risk harming her. Will asks Stella to close her eyes, as he won't be able to walk away if she's watching him. Stella tearfully hesitates but complies, and Will departs. 